Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. In this video, we're going to have a quick look at this telescope, the Celestron C90 Astro. This one's about 45 years old, and we're going to look through some of its features and specifications. If you think that might be of interest and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button now. Okay, so what is the Celestron C90 Astro? Well, it's a small Maxitoff telescope with a 90 millimeter mirror, uh, a thousand millimeter focal length, so it operates at F11, and it was supplied by Celestron from the um, late 1970s onwards. And similar to the C5 Astro that you might see on my channel, it is supplied with a single fork mount ready to go onto a wedge and a tripod, and it is really a mini observatory all in one small package. And when I say small, I really do mean small. This thing is smaller than my coffee machine. It weighs just under four kilos. You can carry it around like it's a dumbbell. You probably need two of these, but it's a really compact telescope, very solid, and doesn't feel like it's, um, doesn't feel like it's 45 years old. Probably the kind of thing they made the Saturn V out of. So if we have a look at its, uh, some of its features, as I say, it is an F11 Maxitoff. It comes with a quirky focusing mechanism that you would have seen in my other videos on the old C90s. So it's a helical focuser, which uh, love it or hate it, but it works okay on this mount because it's, it's, it's solid and you don't really transmit too much vibration through when you're focusing the telescope. So that's a bit of an unusual feature. It comes with a five by 24, Scope, which let's be honest is not really big enough to be of any real use so I'll probably swap it out for, for a red dot finder when I'm actually trying to use this scope a little bit more so yeah single fork mount slow motions on both axis axes declination and right ascension and it is designed to be driven. So if you look underneath, you can see there is a motor here. There you go. And this one is 110 volt uh, US supply. So you plug in, you plug in the cable here. I've got one of those like so. And it drives a synchronous motor. This, in this case, a single motor. And then basically you can track in right ascension if you've got the scope on a tripod and a wedge. So what else came in the box? Well, everything came in this box, which I really like. It's super compact. So inside, aside from the telescope itself, um, came with an instruction manual, which is definitely from the 1970s and some interesting uh, equipment described in there, but yeah, came complete with that. Came with the AC cable, and it came with a box of accessories, which we're gonna to have to have a, a bit of a look at because some unusual features here. So coming around the back, the scope, the scope is supplied with the old size 0.965 inch um, accessories. So you need an adapter if you wanna run with modern 1.25 inch eyepieces. But for now, we'll forget about that. It comes with what you need. Imagine we're in the 1970s if that's possible. So it comes with a diagonal, which is a prison diagonal. And you'll notice straight away that it doesn't have any obvious uh, thumb screw to attach uh, to tighten up an eyepiece in, but we'll just, we'll carry on for now. If I put it in the right way, it's gonna work better. So it has a thumb screw here to tighten against the um, the diagonal, here we go. And then it comes with one eyepiece. So it is a Kellner in this case, 18 millimeter focal length. It just slots in like that. And it's held there with a little bit of friction. It's a little bit spring loaded, the uh, diagonal tube against the eyepiece. So that's it, and nothing, no screw to tighten up. Nice and simple, uh, a bit unusual though. So you're ready to go with the 18 millimeter eyepiece and that's the lowest power that you're gonna be able to achieve with, with, the, with the standard kit. 
It also comes with this um, device, which kind of looks like a Barlow, but it's more than that. It is, in fact, a combination of a Barlow and an extender. Now, I had to look this up to figure out how I would use it in this uh, with this telescope. And there are a couple of pages to explain what you do. But essentially, you uh, try and get this right now. You unscrew the two and a half times Barlow element. I hope you can see that there. And then you actually screw that on to the diagonal, which has a thread inside the tube. And then that can operate like so. So in this mode, you uh, go from, I think it illustrates in the manual, go from 55 times magnification with just the eyepiece up to 140 times. So, okay, bit unusual, but we haven't come to this bit yet. So the tele-extender is the next step. So in the manual, it explains, I'm having to refer to it here because it's not at all obvious. Um, it explains that you can put the extender in this configuration and then put the eyepiece in like this. So like this, you can get to 200 times. So I haven't really tried it out at high power yet. I've certainly tried it out with the standard eyepiece and it certainly works pretty well. I've yet to see how this, this level of magnification, how it, how it copes with that, but we'll see. But a really unusual sort of setup, not the kind of thing we really see too much of these days. Okay, so other features. So I mentioned the um, the fact that it's got a helical focuser, but I think probably certainly myself and maybe other people are likely to get most use out of this by deforking it. Sorry, probably sacrilegious to some, but it's very easy to remove the uh, optical tube from the mount, and you can see. Actually, if I take out the I'll take the eyepieces out a minute so we don't drop those on the floor. But if you look underneath the tube, you can see that there is this um, pad is a bit loose. So I've tightened that up. Once you've removed it from, from the fork, you can screw this into a standard tripod thread. So it's easy to mount on a photo tripod, easily adapted if you wanted to put a dovetail bar on, if you wanted to mount it onto a, an astronomical uh, telescope uh, mount rather like a, an equatorial mount and I'll probably do that I'll probably put this on some of my lightweight equatorial mounts because as I say it's four kilos with the with the um, the mount and probably only a couple of kilos for the optical tube so I hope it's been useful it's just a, a brief introduction to one of these you don't see them very often um, Perhaps one of the interesting things I haven't mentioned so far is that there is a registry of these items as there is for older C5s and C8s. You can come across that on cloudy nights and it tells you how you can figure out how old it is. And essentially on the motor, you can just about figure out the date that the motor was manufactured. In this case, it's some point in 1977, I believe. There also is a serial number that can be found if you look inside the, the corrector plate. So the combination of those two things dates your telescope to some degree or other. So this one I figure is around about 1977. So it is slightly older than the C5 Astro that you've seen probably on another video. Um, I need to use the scope a bit more to tell you if it's actually any good. I've looked at the moon, really nice views, haven't tried it at higher power. So I'll have to reserve judgment on um, how good it is at this point and maybe make a future video about that. Certainly when I've figured out how to adapt the, uh, the visual back to use larger eyepieces. So I hope it's been useful. Um, yeah, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please hit the button and look out for future videos on this telescope and some more modern kit as well. Okay, thanks for watching.